In this how-to stats video, I'd like to address the issue of sample size and the one sample z test. It's uh, pretty common that I come across this rule, and maybe you have yourself, about how the one sample z test isn't uh, particularly useful when the sample size is less than 30, and if you have a sample size less than 30, you should use the one sample t test. But the one sample z test comes into its own once the sample size is 30 or greater. Now, an example of that is uh, a textbook called Statistics for Aquaculture. There are many other um, examples. I've just chosen this one. And you can see that in this table, uh, when you want to compare a mean with a standard value, which means a, a population value, you should use the one sample t test if n is less than 30, and the z test if n is greater than 30. And I kind of understand to some degree the sense behind this, which is that the z distribution and the t distribution uh, approximate each other once the sample size gets closer to 30, although it's uh, very much a continuous uh, phenomenon. Uh, when you actually look at the simulation data, however, to determine whether the z test actually works with sample sizes less than 30, you find that it does. And a study that looked at this in uh, a fair amount of detail is a study by Bradley, James V. Bradley, in 1980, published a paper, Non-Robustness in One Sample Z Test and T-Tests, a large-scale sampling study. And I don't want to pay much attention to the non-robustness issue in this study. I think I'm going to save that for another, uh, another video. But uh, Bradley also uh, simulated uh, normally distributed data, which you can see over here, this is a normal distribution which uh, Bradley simulated uh, in this study in order to compare or determine or estimate the type 1 error rate associated with the Z test. And he also looked at the one sample T test. Uh, so to evaluate, uh, the results were published in, uh, mostly of the results were published in this table here. So this is the robustness of one sample Z test. Now, the key piece of information here are the Y populations, because these Y populations are actually normal distributions. So we're only interested, I'm only interested in pointing out the results associated with the normal distributions. And the other key point is on the side here, we have the sample sizes that were drawn from the populations. Now, I don't, ex you might not know what a simulation is. Uh, I'll probably create another video to, d to describe for you the nature of a Monte Carlo simulation to evaluate this question. But all you need to know at this stage is that the sample, he evaluated 